Previously on The Bill. What do you want them to remember? You making a scene or Chandler telling them that their loved ones were heroes? It's Harry Fullerton. He's just confessed to me that he deliberately started the fire. Are you saying he's confessed to Arthur? And there's been another burglary at the Minimart on the Copthorn. Tony, you know Mr Patel, don't you? Yeah, it's the fourth break-in since Christmas, Sarge. I've got it. OK, that's your lot. Oh, Sarge, what about Harry Fullerton? Has he been charged yet or what? Come on, Reg, you know that comes under Mitt's jurisdiction. We have got a right to know what's going on, Sarge. Yeah, we have. Mm. He's still being questioned. And as far as I know, they're not looking for anyone else. Result for you, Fullerton behind bars? You what? Well, you were there, weren't you? You saw what he did. How can you be so wrong about a person? I mean, Harry Fullerton, I liked him. I thought he was a bit creepy. Mm. See you later. I wonder what he was thinking of. You've been very quiet there, she's not like you. PC Taverner. Not thinking of leaving the country, are you? Only we've got a few more questions we want to ask you, so don't go far. Morning, Jim. Glad you can make it. No, I'm sorry, Sarge. I had a bit of trouble with my car. How does that explain the fact you haven't had a shave? You look like something the cat's dragged in. And you missed the briefing. Cathy will fill you in. Rather, that than you boring me to tears. See you in a minute. Yeah, I better tidy myself up. He's a nothing. A complete loser. I mean, why would Harry Fullerton do something so malicious? Because he's nothing. A complete loser. OK, but he'd still be at the bottom of my list of suspects. So why are you so keen to believe it's him, then? Because he gave a full confession. So what? The guy's probably a crank. Call me old-fashioned, but when I see a mob of racists slinging petrol bombs, my first instinct is point a finger at them. Simpson's got the motive, he's got the organisation. And you have got a bee in your bonnet. I think we should just leave it to Mitt. Oh, of course, I forgot. It's always the easy option for you. Wouldn't want to get your hands dirty. What? Well, as long as you're back home for your tea. Hey, put your feet up. That's you all over, Duncan. This is just a hobby for you, mate. Well, I'd rather that than an obsession. What? I've told you before. You going after Simpson cost Vic Singer's job. And I would like to hold on to my job, thank you very much. Oh, I need some fresh air. It's not Bob a job week, is it? Very funny, Sarge. Just offering me services while I'm on the easy list. Oh, thanks, but no thanks. I could do the dinner on for the prisoners. Very original. You what? Spitting in Fullerton's food? You mentioned anything about Fullerton? Look, Des, why didn't you go and find an old lady and help her across the road or something? No funny business, Sarge, I promise. Des, while Fullerton is in my custody, not you or anyone else off the relief is going to get within a mile of him. Is it Tavener? Ready for our little chat? I was just going to the CAD to see Sergeant Ackland. Our office, now. Eva, how'd you go to the hospital? Mr Barrows, the taxi driver, is pretty badly shaken up. He couldn't give us a proper description, but he found this light on the back of his taxi. It's got a name on it. Gaz. Mm. Barrow said he picked up the man who attacked him at the Scales pub last night. Might be his lighter. Do you think there's a link to the attack on the other taxi driver last week? Wouldn't surprise me. Well, they're both Eastern European. Could be a racist motive. Is that your idea of fresh air? Didn't know you'd start smoking. That's right. You're such an expert on all things me. You what? Oh, you had plenty to say on the subject five minutes ago. Look, it's been a tough few weeks for all of us. Is that your attempt at an apology? Well, I'd make the scales first call for you and Mickey. See if you can find out who the lighter belongs to. Um, I don't know where Mickey is. I thought he was supposed to be meeting you at the hospital. Yes, yeah, so did I. Right. I'll get Danny to go with you. Leave Mickey to me. Why didn't you tell us about Fullerton cutting the CCTV wires? 
Why, what's he been saying? I'm more interested in what you haven't been saying. Bulletin says he told you he'd cut them, so why didn't you inform us? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I forgot about it. It goes in one ear and comes out the other. He's always talking rubbish. I'll be the one who decides what's rubbish and what isn't. Is that clear? Yes, ma'am. Now, is there anything else you're not telling us? Anything you think might be relevant to the investigation? No, ma'am. I want details of your conversation with Harry Fullerton in writing by the end of the morning. But go on. What are you waiting for? Is that tumbleweed I've just seen blowing across the floor? Who the landlord? The manager. Son will see ID. No problem. Don't you think I've got enough headaches without being seen talking to you lot? Oh, well, Mike, it's nice and quick now. Do you recognise this? No, should I? We think it belongs to one of your customers. Someone took a taxi from here last night and they gave the driver a good pasting. They might have left their lighter behind. A lot of punters take taxis from here. Any of them called... Gaz? No, sorry, can't help you. I reckon we start asking questions. This dump will be empty in two minutes flat. And it'll probably take six months to fill back up again. Suits me, mate. I'm the relief manager. I'll put my feet up. What's the racing? What do you reckon? Come on, let's go. Do you reckon they're in the good pub, guys? It's Gary Roaches. Sorry? The lighter, it's Gary Roaches. Right, and what's your name? It doesn't matter who I am. Sure. Look, do you know where this roach lives? Somewhere on the White Gate estate. You don't know where bet? No. Look, all I know is that he's a mouthy git. And when he's had a drink, he's a nasty sod as well. Was he here last night? Yeah. Look, I'd better get back in there. Thanks. Just got to get an address. Duncan, it's Danny. Can you do us a favour? Come on, man. It's... Say who's going back to the Nick. Can you run a check on Gary Roach? Live somewhere on the White Gate. All right, all right. Just leave it with me, eh? Yeah. Duncan, has Mickey shown his face yet? I haven't seen him. Gov, how any idea where Mickey is? He knows we're shorthanded and he's disappeared off the face of the earth. I've had to put Danny on that taxi driver case. Yeah, he's tying up some loose ends on the on the lorry hijack. I thought that was all done and dusted. Well, there are a few odds and ends. You know. Anything I could have helped with? No, no, no. No, thanks, Alex. I think Mickey's got a handle on it. Are you listening? I've got an address for Gary Roach at the Whitegate Estate. Yeah. 84 Harriet House. And listen. Just be careful, you guys, because he's got previous for wounding and a couple of drunken disorders, yeah? Thanks, Duncan. I owe you one. Ha. Well, I won't hold my breath on that. Kissed and made up. I've got nothing to make up for. White gate sat away. Mum? I've got that before you wanted. The life and times of Harry Fulton. Um, listen, I was wondering if there's any uh, chance of a word off the record. No. Oh, come on, it's to me. I didn't... Fullerton must have said something about the fire. With the greatest respect, PC Turner, that's classified information. With the greatest respect, Detective Superintendent Devlin, you weren't the one who was nearly barbecued. Mr Fullerton's made a full confession, but that's all we can say at the moment. But he must have said something. He must have said why he did it. You need a light, Gaz? Hey? Who are you? Police. Sun or CID. <laughs> this is your lighter, isn't it, Gaz? Come on, Gary. I think we need to have a little chat. So where were you last night? Down a pub. Which pub? You were drinking in the scales, weren't you? 
Gary, we've got a witness. Yeah, all right. I was in the scale, so what? What time did you leave the pub? Don't know. About half eleven. And how did you get home? I walked. To the Whitegate estate. Bit of a trick. I fancied the fresh air. Are you going to tell me what this is about? The taxi driver was assaulted last night by a man he picked up at the Scales pub. The man who assaulted the driver dropped this lighter in the back of the cab. So how do you explain your lighter being dropped in the back of the cab? Gaz. I don't know. Oh, well, I lost it the other week, didn't I? I don't know how it wound up there. Oh, come on, Gary, you're going to have to do better than that. This is because I got previous for wounding, isn't it? That was years ago. That was the assault in a takeaway, wasn't it? Mr. Suke, what was he, Turkish? Something like that. All the same to you, are they, Gary? Turks, Asians, Eastern Europeans? <laughs> <laughs> Look, the geezer in the takeaway was asking for it. I'd had a drink. And how much did you have to drink last night? I've told you. I lost the lighter last week. This taxi driver has nothing to do with me. Thank you. Mr Novak. Hello. Hello, I'm PC Jim Carver. This is PC Cathy Bradford Sunhill. How's your arm? They've given me 11 stitches. How am I supposed to work? Taxi driver, aren't you? What am I supposed to do? I have to put food on the table. Mr. Novak, can you tell us what happened? This is my friend oh. Milan Schmitz. Right. He was passing by in his taxi. If it wasn't for him, I would have been killed. Can you talk us through what happened? There was this man in my taxi. He was arguing. He said he wasn't going to pay. Where did you pick him up from? Uh, the railway station. What time was this? About uh, nine o'clock this morning. And where did he want to go? Uh, he asked me to take him to High Road. But then he started calling me names. Uh, uh, he said he wasn't going to pay. Uh, I said if he didn't, I would take him to the police. And that's when he showed me the, the knife. He asked me to stop the car. And where was this? Uh, Gunner Street, near the gas works. It's a bit out of the way, isn't it? Uh, well, we use it as a shortcut. Uh, uh, because of the traffic on High Road. Sure. So what happened next? I stopped the car and he told me to get out. Uh, he wanted my money, so uh, I wouldn't give him any. So he tried to cut me with the knife. I tried to stop him with my arm, but I fell backwards on the ground. But then I heard Milan shouting, and the man ran away. Mr. Schmitzer, can you tell us what you saw? I was on my way to job. I saw Goran's car on the other side of the road. Then I saw the man with the knife. I knew something was wrong. So I shouted at the man, and he just ran away. Yeah, well, I'm not surprised. But Goran is a good friend. He needed my help. So did he take any money? I wouldn't give him any. Why should I? I work hard for it. Mr. Novak, do you think you recognize this man again? Could you give us a description? Well, you must have got a good look at him. Mm -hmm. It was young, white. But all of these guys look the same. Oh, dummy! There's been another attack on a taxi driver. <clears throat> He's a Mr. Novak. He's from Bosnia. When did this happen? Nine o'clock this morning. And Novak got his arm slashed with a knife, and then his mate turned up and chased the bloke away. Got a vague description. So what do you reckon? Do you think he's your man? I don't know. The other attacks haven't involved a knife, but this roach is a cocky little git. I wouldn't put it past him. Think you can get Mr. Novak and his mate to come down here? Yeah, I should think so. Let's put a line up together. Wipe the smile off Roach's ugly little face. Fullerton! They're moving into Bart Street. Since when? Heard Devlin telling Borden in the corridor. Moving him for his own protection. They're going to be looking for a couple of uniforms to escort him. <laughs> well, I hope they don't ask me. I don't think I'd know what to say to him. I'm sure you'd think of something. Well, if they ask me, I'll tell them to take a running jump. If I was alone with that toe rag, I wouldn't be able to control myself. And end up behind bars. Still, you don't have to worry about that, Des. We'll be the last person they'll ask. Hello. We've just been to yours. We thought we'd find you at home with your feet up. Mm. 
I can't afford to have my feet done. I already lost the morning's work. And are you sure you should be driving with that arm? I don't drive, I don't eat. Anyway, we've got some good news for you. We think we found the man that might have done this to you. That was quick. Yeah, well, we thought you'd be pleased. But we can't be sure it is him until we've made a positive identification. We'd like you both to come with us. See if you can pick him out of a lineup. A lineup? Yeah, you know, an identity parade. Well, we've got work to do. Look, I've got a fare to Heathrow. But work's going to have to wait. Do you want us to nail this idiot or what? Cathy, hang on a second. Look. I know you're really shook up about what happened this morning, but we really do need your help in getting this man off the streets. He could kill someone next time. It could be someone you work with, one of your mates. Now, don't worry. He won't see you. He won't know who you are. He'll be in a different room. No harm will come to either of you. I give you my word. There'll be someone with you at all times. So it looks like Mitt will be moving full in the Barn Street this afternoon. Be glad to see the back of him. Yeah, I hear feelings on the relief are running a bit high. Not just the relief. Well, I hope I can rely on professionalism from my officers, Jack. Goes without saying, sir. Good. Well, at least with Fullerton gone, we can put this whole unhappy chapter behind us and start thinking about moving on. Which is why I've just been to see the Chief Super. And the good news is, they're going to open the borough's new community safety unit at Sun Hill. Right. Right. Well, it'll raise our profile and hopefully it'll raise morale a bit too. Like a phoenix rising from the ashes, so to speak. So, fancy it, Alex? Sorry, sir? Heading up the CSU. Well, there'll be someone underneath you taking responsibility for day-to-day -day stuff, but you'll be overseeing it. Mind you, a lot more responsibility for you, though. And more work, no doubt. Look good on the old CV, though. Well, when you put it like that... So, who is going to run it? No one, actually, Jack, at the minute. It's up for grabs. So, any suggestions, give them to me and I'll give them to the borough commander. Debbie? Sir? He had us, right? I think he spotted him. My resource is coming in now. Where's he going? Sit down, number four. Where's he? Stand up, number two. Number two. <sighs> right, get the next one in. You got a moment? I'm having a lunch. I just want a low seat in Fullerton to Barton Street. Who told you Fullerton's going to Barton Street? It's all over the station. Everyone's sound enough about it, about what they're going to do to him. What? That's why I came to see you. They're not thinking straight. They want blood. So be careful who you pick, or you could have a dead prisoner on your hands. Oi! Since when have you been so concerned what happens to Fullerton? Since he tried to make charcoal out of me. If someone gives him a good hiding and Fullerton walks free, then me and all the families of the victims will be left high and dry. We won't get justice. Now, do you want that on your conscience? Because I know I wouldn't. Well, that's good. He thinks it's number five. How'd it go? It didn't. What? Uh, uh, can we go now? Why don't you get yourselves a cup of coffee? I'll be with you in a minute. Where'd you get those two jokers from? What? Neither of them could pick Roach. I don't understand it. It's a complete waste of time. Mm. What? Well, it's obvious they didn't want to be here, isn't it? Well, that's probably because they're terrifying of Roach, frightened he'll come after them. And that's an excuse for wasting our time, is it? And making monkeys out of us in front of CID. Oh, you're all heart, aren't you? You're free to go. Yep. Go on, get out of my sight. Can't touch me. I know you were in that taxi last night. Prove it. 
You know, you want to be careful going around pointing fingers all the time. People might start to think you got a chip on your shoulder. Call your jets, Danny. You what? Let it go. It's over. So he walks, just like Simpson with a big grin on his face. This ain't over. You heard the latest. Uh -huh. We've been landing with the Borough Community Safety Unit. Hey, am I? That's what happens sooner or later, I suppose. Who's going to be in charge of that, do you know? D.I. Cullen. They're looking for some poor sod to do the day-to-day -day work. How much extra work is that going to generate? Oh, yeah, but taking all the domestic and community cases off of CID and the relief, that's got to be a good idea in the long run, surely. Yeah, if you're into pink policing and all that. Oh, very right on of you, Matt. Come on, Jim, it's a sock. A cow takes the PC brigade. Waste of time and resources, if you ask me. You wanted to see me, Sarge? In here. Mitt have asked me to organise transport for Fullerton. They're moving him? Barton Street this afternoon. I see. Obviously, that's highly sensitive information. Yeah, right. So why are you telling me? For some unearthly reason, D.I. Hayes wants you to ride shotgun. Me? That's what I thought. Well, if they want me to do it, it'd be churlish of me to turn them down. Now, you listen to me. You so much as breathe on him. You can count on me, Sarge. I won't let you down. That's what I'm worried about. Uh, Mr. Giles, it's regarding the tailor. Yeah, yeah, I can hold. June, that last night, I am sorry. That's the first time I've been for an intimate meal for two with eight other people. I don't know about you. Yeah, not now, Jim. Yeah, Mr. Giles? I need to talk to you later. Yeah, later. Oh, Mr. Giles, it's, uh, it's Sergeant Ackland here. Don't say I'll never give you anything. What's all this? CCTV from the high road. Thought you might want to see if last night's attack was caught on camera. What? Well, you're the one who's convinced Roach is guilty. I'm going for some lunch. Happy viewing. Uh, Gov, don't suppose there's any sign of Mickey? No, he's still not back yet. No, he wouldn't be. Not when there's CCTV to wade through. So where are you now, Mickey? Right, look. I don't want you to leave the hotel till you've spoken to the manager. Yeah. Good work, Mickey. I'll see you later. Uh, 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 keep your coat on, we're going out. Where? The high road. Camera picked up someone, pulling a taxi driver from his car and giving him a good kicking. Gary Roach? I'm not sure yet, but whoever it was had the presence of mind to wander around the corner into the nearest kebab shop. Let's see if they know our friend Gary. I see you've been roped in as well, taking Harry Fullerton to Barton Street. Someone's got to do it. Yeah, but why me? He confessed to you, didn't he? Well, yeah, he'd more reason to get someone else. I've got nothing to say to the man. You don't have to say anything. Leave it to me. Joe, look, seeing as last night was scuppered by circumstances out of our control, I wonder if we could do this evening instead. Uh, look, could we talk about this in my office? <laughs> I just want a quick yes or no. Uh, please, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Close the door, please. You were late this morning. Yeah, I had a bit of trouble in my car. And Matt Boyden pulled you up on it. Hold on, where's this coming from? Look, outside of work is one thing, but in here he's acting inspector and he has to be treated as such. Pardon? I will not have you bad-mouthing him in front of the rest of the relief. It's not on. It was just a joke. Well, I can't and I won't tolerate it. Are you serious? Yes, of course I am. Right, do I make myself clear? Crystal Sarge. Permission to go, Sarge. Mm -hmm. His name's Gary Roach. He's white, 24 years old, 5 foot 10. He's got short, dark hair, probably wearing a baseball cap and jeans. He'd have been in there around 12 o'clock last night. It's our busy time. There's always people in and out. 
the name doesn't mean anything to you. I'm sorry. He sometimes calls himself Gaz. Gaz? Why didn't you say? You know him? Of course I know him. He's in here all the time. Big mouth, thinks he's a comedian. But I take no notes. Was he here last night? Large donor, plenty of chili sauce. And what time was this? Around midnight. He's always here after the pub shut. Muzzy, thanks, mate. <laughs> he's admitted that he's been a bit naughty. And it turns out that the baby's just got the flu. You're kidding. No, I ain't. You're really starting to get up my nose. So what are you going to do about it, eh? Gas? Cocky git. Come on, then. You've had a couple of pints, a bit of Dutch. You must really fancy yourself. Doing bird for you. I've got a better idea. I'm going to do you for harassment. I'll sue you. Well, I'll see you in court then, Gary. Because you're nit. All right, easy. Busy? You know, I could swear I didn't hear you knock. Worried someone might catch you doing something you're not supposed to be doing? Look, Debbie, I may have given you the wrong impression. What impression were you trying to give? Well, at the memorial service, Feelings were running high and things were very highly charged. I know. Look, OK, what I'm saying is we're both consenting adults. And I hope we're mature enough to realise that these things sometimes happen in the spur of the moment. But under the circumstances, it may not do to read too much into it. So what you're saying is it was just a one-off? A quickie? Look, as I said, we were both very emotional, yeah? Cool. I can live with that, sir. Oh, and uh, by the way, I'll knock next time, just in case. So, what would you say if we were to tell you we've got a witness who said they saw you in Muzzy's kebab shop at 12 midnight? So you were winding me up? Afraid not, Gary. They remember you because of that big mouth for you. All right. Says my word against this. Yeah, but when we throw in the CCTV footage that shows someone matching your description, getting out of a taxi, assaulting the driver, and then staggering off down the street and into the kebab shop, do you want me to go on? Well? What do you think I've done it? Oi! We're the ones asking the questions. They're all on the make, aren't they? All these cabbage eaters or whatever they are. They're all thieves. <laughs> so what does that make you? Robbing a man as he lies on the ground? I was just standing up for myself. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't expect you to understand. He was trying to rip me off. So don't pay the bloke. Walk away. And leave him to rip off the next gazer, yeah? I didn't realise you were so public-spirited, Gary. There was another taxi driver assaulted a week ago last Friday. A Mr Kola. He was attacked and robbed in Nayfield Street, just around the corner from where you live. Know anything about that? Gary, when Mr Kohler is up and about again, I'm sure he'd be happy to ID you. Gary, did you assault Mr Kohler? Yeah. You have been a busy boy, haven't you? OK, Gary, we're going to have to ask you where you were at 9am this morning. I don't know how you managed to pull it off, but you better not screw up. Hey, easy, big fella. You lay one finger on Fullerton, the whole case against him could collapse. That call me up. Yeah, well, just remember there'd be a lot of disappointed people if Fullerton didn't get to court. Get my drift. Message received loud and clear. I weren't at the station at nine o'clock this morning. Why would I have been? So where were you? At home, in bed. Is there anyone who can back you up on that? Yeah, my girlfriend, she don't go out to work till 10. You can ask her if you like. What's all this about? There was another taxi driver assaulted this morning. He was Eastern European too. And whoever assaulted him used a knife. Look, I might get a bit leery when I've had a few drinks, but you ask anyone, I ain't never used a blade in my life. 
You can turn my place over if you like, but I ain't coughing to something I ain't done. Eva, how'd it go? We're charging him with the assaults from Cola and Barrels. So what about the attack on Novak? Says it wasn't him. And he's got an alibi. I believe him. Well, that would explain why Novak didn't pick Roach out of the lineup. Plus, there was a knife used in the attack on Novak, which is not Gary Roach's MO. I think we're definitely looking for someone else. Maybe you should have another chat with Novak and his friend. Yeah, cheers, Eva. So much for your theory about Novak and Smiths have been too scared to finger Roach. Well, at least I had a theory. Yeah, well, I happen to have one of my own. Excuse me, Rach. Don't leave me on sir. I'll only be outside. I want to see my solicitor now. Please keep quiet in there. Been treating you all right, have they? Yeah. Have you had a, you know, a cup of tea and something to eat? Oh. Look, um, we're taking you over to Barton Street. Now, look, it'll be all right. They're a nice lot over there and, uh, well, the food's better too. I am, uh, I'm going to have to put you in these, so I'm afraid. Maybe I should do that, let's you both. Yeah. Hope you're going to behave yourself, Ali. You make things easy for us. And we'll make them easy for you. Sarge! Okay. Right. Let's go. That's Reggie, man. Come on. Murderer. Does he look like a mass murderer to you? I don't know. What does a mass murderer look like? Simpson. Pull up, round the front, and we'll follow you to Barton Street. Sure. It's all right, Sarge. We can take care of him from here. Listen, Reggie, babe, why don't you ride up front with a driver? I'm sure you don't want to be in the back with him, do you? Look, you're all right. I won't lay a finger on him. Yeah, right, just thanks. I remember this. It's all right, Harry. Relax. Your uncle Des is here to look after you. Hello again. Is go run around? He's around the job. Maybe you could have us in. Yeah, but I want to make pick up. Just a couple of questions. But I told you everything. I thought you'd tell us it all again, from the beginning. Right from when you saw Garan's car. Mr. Smith, we were waiting. Okay, I was driving past the gas works. What time was it again? Around nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Where you going? Uh, I'm not sure. You're not sure. Tell you what, why don't I just check with the office? Please. Maybe they can tell me. Please. I don't want any trouble. I'm sorry, Harry. It's just that I've never had you down as a cop, you know. Hey, relax. Harry, you just coughed to kill in six coppers. You can at least tell me why you did it. You seem such an ordinary decent bloke. Why would you want to go and do a thing like that? Not unless you're one of those crybabies. You just can't hack it. Don't tell me you're bullied at school. Don't shatter my illusions. You're not a jelly, are you? This wasn't a cry for help. 
So what is it then? Why'd you do it, honey? I mean, you did do it, didn't you? You haven't just made this up, have you? <laughs> you have, haven't you? You're just some crackpot who wants to get his face on the telly. I killed those coppers. I don't believe you. I'm telling you, I started that fire. So why did you do it then? What's going on? We were hoping you could tell us. What did he tell you? Goran, please. I'm so sorry. It's crazy. Take no notice. Mr. Novak. You've wasted enough our time already. I'm warning you. Don't waste any more. Mickey, next time the governor pulls you off one of my cases, if one of you could have the decency to let me know. Yeah, sure, go. How'd it go anyway? Tie up those loose ends. Mickey, can I worry in my office? Uh, I'll catch you, mate. Tom? Yeah, mate. Well? The geezer who handed in Chandler's mobile. I tracked him down at the hotel he runs. That's where Chandler left his phone. Anyway, I showed him a photo of Chandler and he recognised him straight away. He said he remembered his hair. He thought it was a syrup. Anyway, I had a look at the register and it turns out he's been checking in under the name of Dixon. Ah, very original. I guess he was there the afternoon Mr Conway died. Mr and Mrs Dixon. Chandler and Spears. That's where they were carrying on. That's good work, Mickey. Cheers, Gav. But in the future, I'd like to know what you're doing and where you're doing it. I've had to play Jack and Ori all afternoon to keep Dan Cullen off your back. Sorry, Gav, but we're that close to nailing him, aren't we? Yeah, I know we are. But we've got to smarten up, otherwise we're going to blow the whole thing. And you're going to land us both in it. We've just got to be a bit cuter, Mickey. Just a bit more careful. People would walk out of the room before I'd even finished what I was saying. Can't believe that, Ali. Treat me like I wasn't there. But not anymore. Not now that I've made them sit up and take notice. You've done that all right. Harry Fullerton. Easy going, likes a laugh. Being one of the lads. But they didn't know the real me, what I'm really capable of. Nobody knew what a dangerous man I really am. Frightened. You all thought I wasn't good enough for them. But I show them. Certainly did. If I had you eating out of my hands, you'd never have caught me. I was giving you the runaround. Then why did you give yourself up? What? If you wanted to make laughing stocks out of us, why did you give yourself up? I'll tell you why, I. Because you're a nobody. I'm all over the papers. And this was your chance to be a somebody. Harry Fullerton, everyone knows the name. You're a coward, Harry. A loser who's frightened of his own shadow. And that's why I know that you didn't start that fire. Because you haven't got the body. Uh, when I heard what happened to Yirzikoya, how he was attacked uh, and robbed. Uh, I organized a collection. Uh, the drivers raised over a hundred pounds. But when I went to see Irji, he said he doesn't need the money. He said he was going to get thousands of pounds because he was injured. Compensation? Yeah. Is that why you pretend you've been assaulted? You're going to put a claim in for compensation? Yeah. So who cut your arm? Uh, I did it myself. Look, I, I work 12 hours a day. I, I have no money. I can't survive. Uh, I have to pay car insurance. Uh, uh, I, I have to hire the radio. I even have to pay permit to park in front of my own house. How can I pay these things? You get a bank loan like everybody else. <laughs> Who lent me money? I have nothing, no house. I don't even own my car. I have to pay rent on it. And uh, my wife doesn't speak much English. It's very hard f for her to get a job. Milan will tell you. Like he told us he'd seen you been assaulted. 
Look, I know I've done something stupid. Why don't you just save this for down at the police station? Please, I've hurt nobody. You jeopardised another investigation. Not to mention the amount of police time you've wasted. Well, Kathy, can I have a word? Outside. Please. You're not going to arrest him, are you? Give me one good reason why I should. OK. Like he said, there's no real harm done. He's skint, and all it will mean is more paperwork. Sorry, I can only take so many sob stories in one day. So why don't we just give them the benefit of the doubt? Roach almost walked because of their little scam. Well, they didn't know what they were doing. It just got out of hand. I think I'm going to fall for that poor, ignorant peasant routine. What? They're con merchants, and they've got us down as a soft touch. I'm sorry, but if they choose to live in this country, then they've got to live by the rules like everybody else. Ah, oh, so that's what this is about, is it? You don't like the fact that Johnny Foreign has got one over on you. Jim, grow up! It is, isn't it? You've got a problem. No, Jim. I'm just doing my job. That's what they said at Nuremberg. Goran Novak, I'm arresting you on suspicion of conspiracy to deceive the Criminal Injuries Compensation Authority. So where did you get the battle ball? Found it. Where? Outside. There was a full-scale ride going on. So my money's on you filling your pants and doing one. Walked up, picked it up and boom. Walked back, cool as a cucumber. You're not talking to those haze and devil and muppets now, you know. Five minutes later, blue flashing lights everywhere. What about Mr. Conway? Chief Inspector Conway. I reckon whoever started the fire must have topped him as well. How do you know I didn't? How did you do it then? Petrol bomb. You could have got that off the telly. Tell me something I don't know. What? Who was with you on the bike? I'm not going to tell you that now, am I? All right. Who was with Chief Inspector Conway then? If you were there, you should know that. I didn't recognise him. He was some dark-haired bloke. Mickey Webb's as blonde as they come. Everything all right back there, Des? Yeah. Me and Ali were just chewing the fat. Yeah, I'll let you get on with it. You haven't got a clue, have you, Ali? Have you, Ali? Like I said, you're a bull merchant. You haven't killed anyone. Come in. Made sure I not this time, sir. Yeah, I heard. I've got the weekly crime stats for you. This evening. Bit of bedtime reading, eh? Mm. Enjoy. Deborah. Sir? Thanks for this. Don't mind if I leave you to it, do you? I know you didn't do it, Ali. It's your last chance to change your story, to tell the truth. It was me. I did it. 
Don't be stupid, Ali. No, it couldn't have been you. How do you know? Because of... Boys, he's all yours. Come on, son, let's have you. Let's come on. Got him? Yeah. You seem to have a lot to talk about. Yeah, it turns out we had a lot in common. Yeah. Very informative. He didn't do it, Reggie, babe. What? I just know he didn't. Hell. I call it a sixth sense. But if he didn't do it, why is he saying he did? Because he's off his head. So he didn't do it. Who did? I thought you might have already gone home. I thought I'd better make up the ten minutes from this morning. Right, well you're off duty now. So how about that drink? You're out of order with Matt Boyden, and at the end of the day, I'm a sergeant and you're a constable. But I'm not just any constable, am I? What? You wouldn't have talked to anyone else like that. That's rubbish. Is it? Yes. Why can't we be grown up about this and talk about it over a drink? I don't drink. Oh. Des, don't you think you should make your concerns known to a senior officer? Who's going to be interested in what I think? He's confessed. Well, yeah, but what about if they've got the wrong man? You know? Reg, this stays between us. Look, I'm not trying to tell you how to do your job. Reggie, you know, babe, I'm serious. Not a word to anyone, OK? I'll sort this out on my own time. Never thought I'd hear myself say this. Congratulations on a job well done. Sarge? Maybe I got you wrong, Des. Obviously more to you than meets the eye. I don't know what you said to Fullerton in the back of the van, but it seems he's changed his story. Why, what's he saying? He didn't start the fire. Oh, no, quite the opposite. He's confessed to the murder of Derek Conway as well. Next, on the bill. You've got something to say and you haven't got the guts to say it so I can hear it. Keep it to yourself. I thought I was talking to the organ grinder, not the... The monkey, Chrissy. Maybe we should do some more digging. I didn't think you'd make it.